this is another video for the Aussie Rocks Projects website. Um, today we're talking about this chip here, which is uh, the DG509 ACJ, and that is an analog multiplexer chip. Now, what you'd use this chip for is if you had a, a microcontroller, and let's say you had only two analog uh, inputs, but you needed to measure eight analog. Um, eight analog signals with this chip you need your two analog uh, inputs which go here and here you need an enable pin which is just a normal digital pin and you need two address pins which would be another two digital pins so with two analog pins and three digital pins you then give your microchip the capability to do eight analog measurements. Now the way it works you have um, on either side of this chip we have four analog inputs and the same on this side I have them wired up here the the white wire, the orange wire, the blue wire and the green wire those are the analog inputs on this side and this is the B side that I'm using. Now as well as that you have an analog output and uh, I have it set up here so that I have a couple of voltage dividers set up here going to each of the inputs. So when I take the enable pin here, uh, well actually I, I have it addressed to 0, 0 here, which is S1B. So now if I take the red wire and give it 5 volts, that will enable the, the chip. And now we can see in the multimeter that we have 0 0.11 volts which is the first voltage divider, the very top one, the white wire that's going in to S1B and that's been uh, sent out on the the B uh, analog output going to the multimeter so if I turn off the enable pin again, give it a, a zero and then we'll address S2B by button putting the uh, first address pin, giving it an analog uh, is it zero one, I think it is, in binary. Um, then we enable it again. Now we've got the second uh, voltage divider. We do the same. We switch these two wires. Now we have a zero on the first address and a one on the second address pin. Now we enable it once more. That gives us S3B, which is this third voltage divider. Disable it again. And now if we put both address pins to one, so we've one on the first address pin, one on the second address pin. And now we enable it once more. Now we have 2.49 volts, which is this final voltage divider. So, as you can see, um, just using those few pins, we were able to get, well, well on this on this B port anyway, we were able to get four analog inputs when we only have uh, one analog input on our microcontroller. We were able to measure four analog signals. So that's what you'd use an analog multiplexer for, for expanding uh, the number of analog inputs on your microcontroller. Because a lot of microcontrollers might only come with one analog input and, you know, it could be ten uh, digital outputs but um, in that case you can actually get a DG508 ACJ in that case you'd have a, I'm not sure you might have three address pins but you'd only have one analog output from this chip so your one analog output would go to your microcontroller and then using extra address pins you could turn that one analog input into Maybe it could be uh, nine, nine analog inputs. Maybe I'm not entirely sure. Uh, no, it would be it would be eight analog inputs because you'd have an extra pin for addressing, and it's the same pin number as this. So, uh, with a DG five hundred eight, you could take a microcontroller with one analog input and turn it into microcontroller with eight analog inputs. 
and obviously you'd lose a few digital pins for the addressing and the enabling. So that's all there is really about the DG509. So I hope you found that interesting and uh, if you have any questions post them below the video or post them in the forum and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks for watching.